just me, uh, and I'm going to talk about my old food and drink festival. Okay. I was given the outline of what to talk about today. John was quite specific to look at the history and the development of the event. So in 2006, there was a meeting, and it happened at the Beaufort Park Hotel, and it was nothing to do with a little bit about food festivals, it was about citizen slow movement. And it was getting together farmers and everybody from the whole area to discuss food issues. We had um, people from the Welsh Assembly there as speakers, and it was a fantastic debate where everybody was getting involved from farmers discussing the price of milk that they were getting to cheese, the development of the area, and you also had an awful lot of tourism people there going, we want our products being promoted more. And at that point, I didn't say anything. I was there, as you are today, in the audience, and there was a gentleman there who, well, as I go on, you'll know about him, Greg Shanker, who was the manager of and the owner of the Bryn Howe Hotel at the time. And he actually grabbed me, and he also grabbed Sue Warnock, who was the uh, business manager from the Beaufort, and said, we're going to do a food festival. And I went, don't be daft. There's no way we can do a food festival. He says, and we need to do it in September. Now, we only had six months. Now, very naively, I said, well, all right then. We got our pictures in the paper. Uh, so it was a catalyst event that started the whole thing off. And where do you start putting a food festival together? He knew some people. I had also been with, with the college a long time and we had done Clan, um, Clan for a number of years and we were heavily involved in that. We did at one point step back and let other people have a go in there. And we thought, well, okay. We can do this, but what is this going to do for the college and what will it benefit the college? Okay, so we looked at it from two points of view. From my point of view on work-based, it would build up links with the industry, with hospitality and also with tourism. From a college point of view, from the curriculum side, it would give the students realistic face-to-face -face contact with an awful lot of customers so that they could build up their customer service skills, interaction, giving them confidence. Don't forget, they were only going to be in college two weeks and then they were going to be doing a food festival. How realistic can you get? So you think about realistic working environments, you can't get more real than that. They're producing food in a production line. They're doing cakes, etc., ready for this. And not only that, we said, oh, we'll have a gala dinner as well. So we, we put together a festival, we hit our heads against walls for different things that came up. Believe it or not, and this will be a real shock to everybody, county council departments don't talk to each other. It's a real shock, they really don't talk to each other. So when you have to get permission to actually have a licence to actually use a concrete area, you have to go to one department. When you want to get it surveyed, because when you're actually putting marquees up, you have to drill holes in, in the tarmac. So you have to get another department out to survey that we're not going to go through any underground cables or anything. So just the logistics of that. And then, hang on a minute, we're going to need to get rid of the waste. We're going to have to involve lots of different departments within that. And where on earth are we going to get the money from to do this? So there was loads and loads of things. We were going, oh my God, what have we done? Luckily, most companies said, well, all right, this is the first time you've done it. We won't have payment until you've done your food festival. Then you'll have the money from the people coming through the door, hopefully. We took insurance out as well. And it worked out. So the first one, we had our first celebrity chef at, which was Ed Baines. So what did I introduce him as? Ed Barnes. So he said, it's easy, my name rhymes with uh, brains. So what did I introduce him as then? Ed Brains. Okay. Key stakeholders. So again, you ha we had to talk to an awful lot of people. 
to get this food festival off the ground. Some wanted to be involved in it, some didn't want to be involved in it. We also had to involve the community. There's no way you can get uh, involved in something like this without having lots of volunteers. Because it's a big event you're organising. You're not organising a small church fete. It is a huge event that costs an awful lot of money. Okay, this is the bit that I hope the Wi-Fi is working. I didn't know I was going to have to lean so high, but I will. I just thought you'd like to see the food festival coming together. So this is one we did in 2011. Just looking at the site before everybody arrived. This was on the Friday before the festival was on on the weekend. And this is the logistics. See the cars? We blocked off the car park and said, don't park here. So what did people do? They left their cars there. So this is on the Wednesday afternoon. We were having to wait for people to move their cars so that they could put the rest of the marquees up. That's the music stage going up. It's the car park in Mould. It's the, it used to be the Gateway car park. It's now the Co-op car park there. We went for lots of cabins. We call them cabins or their sheds. Uh, it was good. So we've got an outdoor area, we've got an indoor area. It developed quickly into a much bigger festival. The first year, the amount of people that we had through the door was three and a half thousand people. By 2011, we were having between 13 and a half thousand to 15 thousand visitors to the site. So that's why it grew. We, we grew from one part of the car park to taking over bit, 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 further and further along. A really good uh, marquee company, this one, by the way. And they're local. A pizza oven arriving there. Not the one that belongs to uh, our college. This is another one. of grants from uh, the Welsh Government and also from local bodies, you have to have a percentage of Welsh exhibitors and they determine that and that's going to be over 75%. So yes, you've got an awful lot who come from England who want to actually be there, but you've got to give the local first priority on it. Forties, does everybody know Forties? They're from uh, Anglesey Stroke, from Colwyn Bay area, Thundidno Thund area as well. Relatives of the Forte group, the hotel group. This is the college area, one of the college areas, where refreshments are done, interactive area where people can have hands-on with their children, having a go at different things. Demonstration area. <laughs> it's all set up ready for everybody to arrive. So it's zoned if you like. So there's a zone area which is the exhibitors, there's a zone area which is your outside dining area where you get loads of different takeaway companies come and you have like a music stage with different types of music going on over the two days. So we had to form with key uh, stakeholders and subgroups because if you think about it there's an awful lot to do including your booklet with all the information in that you talk about who supported you, who helped you, and you have to have your formal uh, group as well. So you've got your formal people, so we seconded quite, on, you know, because to begin with, there was three of us. So we got more people involved. You can't just organise a, a festival with three people. Okay. 
So what are the procedures and stages? So we've got websites, we've got Facebook, they've got Twitter as well. Uh, cooperation from the college. The college benefit from this, as I said, in many different ways. Supporting uh, a food festival and, and the localism is something that um, David Jones was very much for. And it's, it's sort of, it's free advertising as well. It's really good to support the community, but you've got advertising there and it's not costing you a lot and it's benefiting with the learners. Okay, so we've got the different zones and there are clips, but I'm not gonna use them because we're a little bit short of time. As I said, we had WAG support and we also had Cadbury Include support. Flinch County Council also gave not money, but they actually gave support in free facilities, like they put on a free shuttle bus service, so that people, because they knew there was a parking problem in Mould, so they set up the actual facility for the whole weekend where people could get there and wouldn't have to think about car parking charges or being done for parking, which can be a major issue. If somebody's done for parking, they won't go to it again. And so, you know, and we were taking over the area, which is normally the long stay. So you've got to facilitate other things there. Okay, volunteers are must for things like this. Okay. How is it organised? Transport, logistics, volunteers. We, as I said there, the uh, free shuttle bus. Collections of waste. Do you imagine the wastage that you get uh, even in a morning from a food festival? And the logistics of taking it off site or making sure that there's somebody from the council would work at the weekend. Even to open the toilets for the weekend as well and to put extra toilets on for the actual stall holders. Then making sure we complied with health and safety regulations, food safety regulations. At one point, the HO walked around and we nearly got shut down one year because they'd given us the wrong fire extinguishers in the demonstration area. They'd given us water ones when we should have had powder, which we very quickly had to sort out because they said you can't do anything here without that in place. So little things can affect big things. Mould Town Council councillors were very good in organising an awful lot of the volunteers. Uh, putting all that together, they manned the door, if you like, the gate, to make sure that people paid to come in. You won't believe how much they lost in entrance fees from people saying, I've got an email here, I've been given a pass to get in. They didn't have a pass, but they were given a pass to get in. Uh, a friend of a friend said I could get in. The, and it wasn't a big fee that they were paying. Originally, it was £3.50 to get in. It's now gone up to £5. So it's not a huge amount. You do get the brigade that think it should have all been free. Well, I'm sorry, it costs an awful lot of money to put, put a food festival on. Uh, year one, it cost us about 50000 to put on. It's now reaching about seventy to 80000 to put a food festival on. That's the difference, but it, because it's gone bigger. Okay, some of the people that were involved, we've got the round table, they were fantastic. Um, they were actually there putting up the fences on the Wednesday. They'd be there the whole weekend. They'd help with the money run. Because don't forget, you've got a lot of money there and you don't want anything happening to it. I'll come on to that in a minute. Uh, FCC were there, which is great. Uh, Mold 2000, which was an organisation that they'd started for all employers in the Mould area so that they could get together and talk and network. And a lot of them came over and supported. Of course, the college. We limited it to about two or three charity stalls so that we weren't inundated with charity stalls, but the main ethos of it was a food and drink festival. WI were involved, uh, they brought in and did their competition as well, they've done barrel brief competitions, etc., which has been fabulous. WAG funding, TPNW funding, Cadwin funding, we had the cadets, now they were brilliant, they went round collecting rubbish that was on the floor. So they were endlessly going round all the time, and they were also there to direct people to the festival. 
I won't go into that one because I've only got five minutes. Again, these will be available. So if you want to go into any of the clips and have a look at these, uh, John will let you have it. Okay? All right, charity element, the college charity. So everything that we did as a college there, the money went to the college charity. And over the years, we've raised thousands at the festival. It's been a really good thing for our college charity. We've, you know, as a whole, each department raised a lot of money for charities. But this was like the catalyst of the year, starting it all off. Like, I know, I, I've stepped back from Old Food Festival this year, but I know it still went on fantastically. And they raised £1,000 this year, which is, is great, and hands off to Anne Harrod. She was part of that as well. And they raised a lot of money there. So that's another element of it. OK. Delegation, cooperation of volunteers. We had a blip in year three. I'll call it a blip, because I'm being recorded. Uh, missing money year three. Uh, year three was the person who started the whole thing off, who was the inspiration, had money problems and he dipped into the uh, festival money. And it was a bit of an eye-opener. I can't go into the ins and outs of it, but he did get four and a half years prison. At that point, we went, we don't want to do one. We don't want to do one. And... Flitcher County Council came to us and said, you must, you've got to. Everybody understands that it wasn't the committee, it was one individual, it's very traceable that it wasn't anybody else. And to be fair to all the people who were owed a lot of money that probably didn't even get it back, they stood by us, including the marquee company who was owed a lot of money, and I mean thousands. They stood by us and said, no, we trust you. At that point, somebody called John Les Thomas, who a lot of people do know, came on as chair. Uh, at that point, we started to rebuild it. We had a very tight, small budget that year. We didn't use high-profile celebrity chefs. We used local ones. We had Graham Tinsley came on board. We had Brian Meller came on board. And we had a really good, solid festival. And we only had four months to put it together because we weren't going to do it and we had to put everything in place very very quickly but we did year three a festival I don't know how we did it but we did it other things that have hit them is the recession yes it has hit everybody because the money from uh, Welsh government went smaller and smaller and smaller the lack of funding and support has gone like with TPNW, are no longer a body, so they can't have any money from that. So it's, it's those type of things that have gone down. Okay, plans for the future. Involving more mould employees. Uh, to be self-funding, okay. That part they are on track to do by next year. 2015 will be year 10. So in 2015, they should be self-funding they won't have to rely on any government funding whatsoever that they'll have generated enough income there that if anything happened they could produce the whole thing themselves which is brilliant state affairs being they need to tweak the format each year to make it fresh put new things in there so people do want to come to it each year bring in new committee members yes they do need to bring new blood in there more foodie people need to be in there because a lot of it now is I think there's one person on the committee now who has got food and hospitality background. So they do need to bring in more foodie people into that festival now. And they've also, this year, they did the Flincher Hospitality Awards, which was a brilliant event, that the college students actually did the dinner, which was great for the students, but it was also great for the actual area as well. Okay. Well, that's it. Okay, find out more. So those are your websites you could go on to, melfoodfestival.co.uk, Facebook, and also Twitter. And they are very active on that as well, and it is promoting the area. So if you want to get involved with your local festival, it's really good for you to do. There are benefits. Okay. Go. <laughs> um, my name's Donna. I am one half of the Wrexham Food Festival organisation. Carolyn said she can't do it with any less than three. We do it with two. We are much 
much smaller than the Mold Food Festival. Um, we initially started, when I say we, I'm talking about Nightingale House and the Local Food First Project in Wrexham. I'm the Local Food Project Officer in Wrexham and we're WAG funded through the Rural Development Programme. So I help Nightingale House with the costs involved with putting on the event. They take all the profit from the event to go towards their charity. <coughs> Just the location of it, we started, there was a food festival in 2010 and it was in collaboration with a private company called Exuberance. They went out of business, so there was no food festival in 2011 and then we discussed with Nightingale House getting together and since then for the last three years we've been doing it together. Um, logistics wise, I don't know if you can see any of this, this is through this app, that was through this app and by there. <laughs> That was Nightingale House Hospice. They've got a lot of infrastructure themselves. They've got the vans, they've got the manpower, so it's not very far to take things back into. As I said, the history of the event, 2010 started it, 2011, no food festival, and then subsequently in these years, I'm scared of touching this little yeah. bit, boom. Um, <clears throat> the stats for the last three years, year on year, we've increased the stall holders. However, the local producers seem to have fluctuated year on year. 2,000 people attended and we made 4,400 profit for the festival. 2013, stallholders increased, local food producers decreased, footfall and profit increased substantially. In 2012, it was the first food festival, so we, it was a learning curve. Personally, I wasn't involved because I wasn't in post at that time. Um, <clears throat> But from that, there was a debrief, learnt a few things, cutting costs was the main one, and that's why in 2013, Nightingale House had set up um, with Melody Corporation, and they do all our marquees, and he's a really good guy, because he stays all weekend, and he's just the odd job man, basically. If you need him, he's there. <clears throat> Profits increased, footfall increased. However, the tent itself was too small and it was cramped and that was the feedback that a lot of people the public in general was saying so for 2014 we made the tent bigger um but then there was a heat wave so people went off to the beach <laughs> <laughs> or went and watched some football match football again stalls increased food producers increased that year because 2013 they had a really good year take-ins wise so it increased substantially um, footfall was there or there about from the year before and profit was there or there about from the year before. For year on year we've introduced little bits, ex little bits extra from the year previously. 2013 we introduced the website, 2013 we introduced the music stage as well, 2014 all the social media behind it as well um, and 2014 we introduced Colin Cambria and the interactive tent and Carolyn took over hosting of the food demonstration kitchen as well, which freed me and Laura up to do other things. <clears throat> How it comes together, the organisation, we do tend to try and get preparation started as early on in the year as we possibly can, but because we're both doing our own jobs, it's difficult sometimes to get it that far planned in advance. Nightingale House take um, ownership of the infrastructure, the marquees, the toilets, the bins, the fencing, all that kind of thing. And because through my project, I'm not allowed to generate an income. She does all the ad administration, taking the booking fees and all that kind of thing from the stall holders. Um, they'll do the promotion of the website, the social media, all that kind of stuff as well. And then they organize the volunteers. With it being a hospice, they do have a bank of volunteers and there is a volunteer coordinator on the day and she will put the volunteers where they need to be collecting money on the stalls out in the town with buckets all that kind of thing as well there's they've got a good set of blocks that'll go in at the weekend and they will do all the heavy lifting with the fencing setting up with a marquee guy and everything me i do the demonstration kitchen i organize the healthy schools competition i'm in contact with the producers in wrexham and this year I did the food festival programme as well. The people that benefit from it are obviously the producers, 
and that's getting the message out there that the local food and what they can produce. We have local and national chef, chefs, not shelves. Um, this year, we had Leslie Waters. This was our first time that we had a high profile ce celebrity chef. Um, Brian did come last year, but he was down at Eagles Meadow, the big shopping centre in Wrexham. Um, that didn't work. There was a collaboration between themselves and the food festival. It detracted from the food festival that year. Um, but they longed as Bryn Williams to come up and do a book signing. They get out of it, the local chefs get out of it, it's publicity for their, for their restaurants. Um, there's a lot of involvement with the schools and colleges, like I said, we do the Healthy Schools competition. Um, Colin Cambry are involved this year, they, these are some of the kids. And the school dinner ladies have stands as well and put out their healthy meals and sometimes they will do do a bit on stage as well. <clears throat> the visitors obviously because without them we wouldn't have a food festival and the benefits to Nightingale House as a charity because this is all done for charity I don't take a penny from it is that in, as you can see from this in 2014 it will cost them 2.6 million and they only get 19% of that coming from the local health board so they've got to have a big program of fundraising and this is one of their biggest events in the calendar to fundraise. They obviously get community recognition, recognition and networking opportunities from it and that is about it that I have to say. Mm -hmm.